Have I found my perfect Lakeland 100 shoe? Fast, light and responsive enough to take advantage of all of those runnable trails, but yeah, enough grip to cope with some wet grass. I think there's a couple of bogs and some rocks that could be slippy if it rains. Also, yeah, and don't underestimate this, enough comfort to cope with, fingers crossed, just under 24 hours out on the trails. Hi everybody, today I'm going to be looking at Ultra's flagship racing shoe, the Ultra Mont Blanc Carbon. Now I did hear mixed reviews for the original Mont Blanc and the Boer Mont Blanc too. So fingers crossed, yeah, a few tweaks here and there and the addition of that carbon plate will make this the ultimate zero drop trail running shoe. I'd like to thank Vela Forte for sponsoring this product review. And if you would like to save 25 percent off over at Vela Forte then watch to the very end or fast forward to the very end yeah and I will share that with you now these are going to set you back 220 pounds over at Ultra and it's pretty much the same price over at sportshoes.com patreons can save 10 percent off over at sportshoes but Ultra will stock a wider range of sizes can't lie 220 pounds that is a lot of anybody's money but yeah, if you're in the market for some super shoes, whether it's trail or road, then this unfortunately just seems to be the reality. Now on the scales, my ladies UK six and a half, we're in at 228 grams, and that is the same as my new Balance Fuel Cell Supercom Trail. My Hawker Tecton X2 comes in at 237 grams, so yeah, a little bit lighter than the Hawker, but fundamentally no massive difference between all three super shoes the outsole of the Mont Blanc carbon uses the vibrant mega grip with light base and I'm measuring the lug depth at three millimeters you know as soon as I see vibrant then it's a sigh of relief from me now my local trails are quite stony not particularly technical for the most part but it is March and the trails have been wet as always we've had quite a lot of rain so yeah a bit of mud out there on the trails and that vibrant mega grip light base has been awesome absolutely no dramas on the trails however if you go off trail and you're on some grass or some bogs or some super muddy ground then yeah you know it is going to be a fun ride at times but only three millimeter lugs so that is exactly what i'd expect now i've done say about 90 miles in these all on trails maybe mm, a mile or two as i'm making my way to the trails and there is hardly any wear at all big thumbs up for the outsole and moving on up to the midsole 29 millimeters stack and it is a zero drop shoe and the 29 if memory is correct that is the same as the tim 5 and you've got a mixture of this ego max form around the rim and then in the core you've got the ego pro form and if i understand the tech right that means yes it's like a bit of a bathtub shape and the max form is around the outside and then the pro is at the core and basically what that does You've got a lot more cushioning when you strike down to the ground and yet yeah, it does lead to a very comfortable ride not too squashy though but enough comfort for those long days out on the trails it felt more comfortable than the hawker technonix 2 but not as soft and spongy as the new balanced fuel cell supercom trail this combination of the foam and the carbotex carbon plate it does an awesome job of propelling you forward i've done quite a few workouts on the trails in these I've done hill sessions, like a trail, fartlek, and other fast runs too. And that midsole, yeah, it really wakes up when I wanted it to. Lots of energy return during faster runs. Quite a bit of flex for a carbon plated shoe. It did feel stiff initially, but it relaxed after a few runs. No rock plate, but don't panic. That carbon plate, you know, it doubles up as a stone guard too. And I've had absolutely zero issues with any rocks or anything else for that matter, hurting the underside of my foot, which is very welcome. The upper is made from a breathable mesh around the heel and the side, but it transitions into a much softer material around that toe box. But don't worry though, you do get firmer guard, a bit of firmer material around the front there just to protect the toes. And it is a nice, generous toe box volume too. Super comfortable, talking about comfort. The Ultra Mont Blanc has Ultra's natural fit and it is lovely. You know, these are a ladies, but still plenty of room for my little chubby feet. Not as roomy as say a low peak, but definitely, in my opinion at least, more than the Tim 5. Yet, 
these do fit my feet well. Super happy feet, no rubbing, no blisters, no hot spots, no drainage or overheating issues too. You know, the material does an awesome job keeping everything cool. It is March, but we do get the occasional warm day. And like I said, this material just keeps everything cool, even when the pace picks up. Nice to see that it sizes up well too. These are a UK Lady six and a half, and the length is consistent compared to other shoes I run in. The ladies fit is totally fine for me, that natural fit. You've got overlays that cover up a lot of the stitching, and that not only looks awesome, it helps keep the shoe super comfortable. Yeah, I mentioned it looks awesome. Brilliant design. Yeah, very easy on the eye. I know it's personal taste, but these have to be my favorite looking trail shoes so far for 2024. The foot feels secure and comfortable at the heel, midfoot and arch, which is great and a nice amount of padding around the ankle. I can't remember any real complaints about slippage and it is an extremely comfortable heel cup. The tongue is well padded, so no issues across the top of the foot and that is nice and super comfortable. And overall, yeah, it is a super comfortable shoe do appreciate i've said comfortable quite a lot anyway it's nice to see there's a full gusset on that tongue and that just helps keep any crap out finally you've got a velcro gator tab on the rear and a little heel pull too yeah handy not completely necessary well unless you like to wear gators as expected the ultra mont blanc carbon is a super fast race gear and workout shoe and if you're a fan of ultra and you can afford 220 pounds then you probably want to have these on your feet for important races and workouts. I mentioned price and that is my only issue I have with the shoe because uh, yeah, I do love it. I'm gonna put a lot of miles in this shoe, but yeah, 220 pound, we do have to mention it. And it is not me firing a shot at Ultra in particular. New Balance, North Face, Nike, Saucony, and probably loads of others have shoes at that 200 pound, 200 pound plus mark. So unfortunately, yeah, that does show a trend. I would love to see four millimeter lugs on that outsole. I think it would be a much better shoe for UK trails, especially for longer races when the terrain throughout the race, you know, Lake 100, my goodness me, you've got road, you've got really muddy sections, you've got steep rocky climbs, steep descents. So yeah, a four millimeter lug for the UK, that would serve us much better. Will they make it into my weekly shoe rotation? Yeah, 100%. I'd be crazy not to take advantage of that speed, snap, pop, comfort, but because of the price, I probably will keep these for race day and workouts. And I do weekly workouts on the trail, so that fits well. And that is exactly, you know, if I'm buying some road super shoes, Nike Alpha Flies, for example, then I would save them for race day and workouts. Will they be my Lakeland 100 shoe? Will they help me break? 24 hours well i'm 50 50 between these and the new bands fuel sell super comp trail the ultras are not quite as cushioned as the new bands but they do feel more agile and responsive and faster you know just respond to that ground beneath me a bit better it's a super tough decision and one i can't answer yet and that shouldn't be a negative for the ultra i absolutely adore my new bands and thought they would be nailed on my Lakeland 100 shoe. So these have thrown a massive spanner in the works. Maybe check out Coniston, end of July, and see what I've got on my feet. What are your thoughts? Are you a fan of the previous Mont Blanc's versions? Let me know in the comments below. And what do you think is gonna be your 2024 race day and workout shoe for the trails? Before you go, thank you Vela Forte for sponsoring this review. If you'd like to try, award-winning nutrition and delicious bars, gels, chews, and protein shakes, then pop over to Vela Forte, save money on your first order, and Patreons, my goodness me, you can save a whopping 25% over at Vela Forte. I will pop all the links in the description. And don't forget, Patreon members can save 10% over at sportshoes.com and money off at loads of other places too. Please check out Patreon. You save money, you support this channel, you support our partners, and you get to feel awesome too. Result. Finally, Ultra did send me this a test, but they're not paying me. And more importantly, they did not check this video before I uploaded it to YouTube. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, if you found it useful, then please like, share, and subscribe. It's completely free to do all of those things. But why not check out the UK's number one trail running podcast, TN Trails. Myself and Eddie Sutton upload weekly trail running content. If you like the trails, if you like running, then there's a good chance you're going to enjoy the podcast. That's it from me. You take care. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.